my mom's like, what is he? Christopher! <laughs> <laughs> Alright folks, welcome back to Driftwood Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera is Matt, as always. So this is the next episode of the 3000 year old guitar build. In the previous episode, we glued on the tail block and the neck block, and you can finally see I'm literally pushing down as hard as I can on this thing, and it barely moves. So we have achieved the result that we want, but the best part is we're not done yet. The sides and the rim of this guitar are actually gonna become significantly even stronger. And what we're gonna do in this episode is begin the process of putting an arm bevel on the guitar. For those of you who don't know what that is, I think most people do, but what it is, is this bevel section that we put on the lower bout where your right hand goes across the lower bout of the guitar. And I started doing them on my guitars, gosh, probably five years ago. I actually got the DVD by Kent Everett on how to do a guitar traditional arm bevel and uh, I believe that he does it the Kevin Ryan style as well there's there's lots of different types of arm bevels but this is the Kent Everett style of doing it and it's a pretty complicated process so if you guys are watching this video because you want to learn how to do an arm bevel we are going to make a separate playlist that is just specifically the arm bevel portion of this guitar because this is a longer video series on how to build a 3000 year old guitar so Join us for that one from episode one if you're here for just the arm bevel and vice versa. So what we need to do is move this out of the way and we'll go about talking about how we're gonna make this. All right, so luckily for me, I have a CNC machine <laughs> and I've been able to make what is my, I don't even know what you call this, my, my backer for the arm bevel on my CNC machine. But I did want to kind of give you a quick rundown of how you would go about doing this if you didn't have a CNC machine where you can pre-make these because that's how the vast majority of you guys are gonna be doing this. So let me grab a piece of wood. <laughs> All right, normally what I make my arm bevel out of, the actual backer piece, is a piece of basswood. I do recommend using basswood or mahogany because it's very lightweight. We want to make this bevel uh, without hindering the weight of the guitar as much as possible. I don't have any scrap basswood, all I have is this piece, but I'm gonna show you how to do this using this piece of alder, but it's the same thing. What you will do is you'll get yourself a basswood body blank from LMI or anywhere online. Once you have bent up the sides of your guitar and you have them fully closed up, um, you would actually put this in the spreaders. All right, so the way that we're gonna do this is to, to make this piece out of this blank to look like this is we're actually going to set that whole guitar rim on here spread out fully seated towards the outside of this rim and we are going to take a pencil and trace that perimeter all the way to the tail block I'm gonna do a line right where the tail block goes and I'm gonna do a line right where the center of the waist goes do it again just for good measure perfect and you will then pull it off this is the center of the waist here. I don't know how much we can see. And this is the where the tail block starts. The next thing that I'll do is use my dial calipers. This is where it's up to you to determine how large you want your arm bevel to be. So what I like to do on my guitars is I make this at its full width, one inch. Um, by the time that I add my abalone trim and my purfling and all that stuff it ends up being about a three-quarter inch bevel so what I'll actually do is find the center point kind of just using my eyeball here with my dial calipers and I'm gonna mark out one inch we're gonna do that there the other thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to make the thinnest parts on the bevel backing piece the same thickness as my kerfing is going to be so that when I glue the kerfing in that everything lines up absolutely perfectly. I think that's pretty easy to understand. So I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick idea of how to do this at home. We're gonna mark this here, mark that there. And now what I tend to do is to, <laughs> either you can use your mold or a template that you have. And I actually just kind of like lay this on here 
and see there's my one inch mark right here. So I'm gonna take this and go like that. And then I'm going to go like that over here. And that's gonna give you a very rough idea of what that looks like. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually come in here by hand and just lay this out so that I can get that to look the way that I want. Um, just remember, there's the important thing to remember when you're doing your arm bevel, when you're making this piece, is that the top is going to glue onto this. If we'll just pretend this is the top, that it actually has to overlay, it has to have some glue area. So this area right here is just gonna be surface area where the top is, is being glued to. So the arm bevel doesn't actually start till right there. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? So whatever you do when you make the full depth of your arm bevel, basically uh, about a quarter inch of it, or what is that, six, six millimeters-ish, um, is actually going to be space that's not part of the bevel. It's gonna be just glue surface area for the top to be glued down onto. Um, then you would take this on your bandsaw and you would cut this out and what you'd be left with is this. It's your arm bevel backer. It's a lot thicker here than it needs to be, but you get the idea, right? I think we're all your, caught what up. What's your final thickness there? I think this here is about two inches, uh, 1.8 inches, um, or 45 millimeters yeah. is where we're at on this final piece. So I know that was a quick, real crude idea of how to do that, but I think it gives you a good idea of how I would go about doing this. And the way that I did it on my CNC machine was I just basically took my body profile and brought it in the, the three and a half, four millimeters, which is the thickness of my sides, and then you know cut it out on the CNC machine to my liking. So now I've got a drawer full of these ready to go. The main reason I use the CNC machine is because it can be hard to clean this up. You have to use a spindle sander and your edge sander to get it to fit really nicely. Um, and then also you waste a lot of wood with it with a bandsaw. So with a CNC machine, I was able to get a whole bunch of pieces out of one piece of basswood. It saves me a lot of time there. Um, the other thing that you need to do once you cut it out is you really need to come in here and make sure that it fits really nicely so that everything kind of fits inside this with no gaps or very minimal gaps. So you'll take your time and you're gonna finesse it with your spindle sander and with an edge sander. I will say that I think that you almost by necessity have to have either an edge sander or a belt sander that you can actually get an inside radius with or a spindle sander in order to pull this off. If you don't have that as a power tool, then I don't think that there's a really elegant way to do this. You definitely need something that is a power tool that gives you an inside radius sanding capability. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this side out of the mold real quick and we'll move on to the next step and I'll show you how we're gonna to begin to make this match the sides of the guitar. Just a, a little aside, I was talking to Matt between shots there and I wanna to try to get across to you that the arm bevel process is a build it from the inside out kind of a process. We're gonna do one step here and the next step in this process is gonna be like three or four steps into the guitar build. And then the next step in the arm bevel is gonna be towards the end of the guitar build. So I wanna to try to make this as clear as possible for you guys, but just remember that you're not gonna have the total picture on how this works until we're probably on episode two or three of this series, just because there's 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 a lot of moving parts and- The and arm a, building series. Right? Yeah, the, 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 arm, the arm bevel building series, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's just a whole lot of uh, different things that I know because I've done this enough times, kind of like future things that we need to consider that you probably don't know if you've never done an arm bevel. So just take what I'm saying and keep that in mind as we move forward, that if you have some questions about the why, that we will answer some of those as we move further into this arm bevel series. Let me pull this out real fast. So that's good. Okay, so the nice thing, if you, have you, if you have taken your time at home and really gotten the profile of this thing perfect so that it fits inside these sides, that it'll match the mold, that's what's super important at this point because now what you need to do for this next step is to have the sides out of the mold so you don't have that uh, in, uh, insurance of knowing that the guitar shape is the correct shape. So this is now gonna become very crucial to maintaining the shape of your guitar. So, because I use the CNC, I know that it's super good. What I want to do now is take a white pencil and I'm going to mark 
right there. I'm gonna mark right where the end of my bevel is going to be, and I'm gonna mark right where the other end of my bevel is going to be. And then I'm going to take my digital calipers. <laughs> Those of you who know, know. <laughs> and we're gonna mark, to my preference, a one inch mark on this end. So I'm gonna set this, my dial caliper to one inch. For those of you in the rest of the world, that is 25 and a quarter millimeters, and we're just gonna do a mark. What I like about the arm bevels is that they're, each one is slightly unique to the next one because there's a lot of just kind of doing it by hand. Um, I'm sure you can make a template to do this, but what I like to do is to just freehand it, and I'm gonna mark on the sides here kind of where this bevel's gonna go. And we're gonna, I, I find that the deepest point should be right about there, right where your arm goes. So just know that that's kind of where you wanna aim for as far as the deepest point of your bevel. I don't need it to be exactly one inch, it's not a big deal but that's where I mark it. And then we're gonna take that and we're gonna trace it all the way to there. All right, following along, smell what I'm stepping in. All right. The biggest issue that I think you'll probably have if you do this for the first time is just not getting it to look right. It's a good arm bevel should almost just melt into the binding. So it's important that you just really take your time and look at it and make sure that it flows really nicely into where the binding is. The trick is obviously there's no binding on this yet so you can't visualize where that is. But just remember that your binding is going to be here, right? Sorry, it's hard to do. And that you just need to make sure that it's, it's gonna melt really nicely into that so that it becomes very natural. So if we go back to this previous one, especially when you look at it from the side profile, it just looks really nice. There's not like this giant curve in it suddenly where the be where the um, bevel starts. It just looks fairly nice and elegant. Same thing with the front. I remember the first two or three that I made, they were just very, uh, very abrupt would be the right word, I think, on how those came out. So it takes practice. Your first bevel is probably not going to be perfect, but just like everything in guitar building, that seems to be the case, right? So let's just back up just a little bit. Remember what we're doing. We've got, we've taken our time to make this and for you playing at home, it will have taken you a lot longer to make this than it was in this video. But I don't need to bore you with those details. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And then we're gonna lay that in there and we're gonna mark where we want that bevel to actually be. So what we need to do now is we need to remove all this material. Um, I have tried this a whole bunch of different ways, but I think the way that I'm gonna show you now is I think probably the quickest to do it. So what we're gonna do is go over to the spindle sander and um, we're gonna knock out some of this material. Okay, so what I have learned in order to make this work is that, well, I think the first few times I did it, I just tried to chisel this section out, obviously going downhill with my chisel so I don't get a bunch of tear out. Then it occurred to me that if I take my spindle sander, I can just create a nice cutout section here and then hit my chisel and match it. If you don't understand what I'm saying, you will see in just a second. So we're gonna take my spindle sander and I'm just gonna make a nice cutout section right here. I promise you this feels so weird. As you do your arm bevel, everything suddenly starts to look really lopsided and really ugly. So don't be panicked. It's gonna look and feel really weird, but it'll come together in the end. <laughs> there what we've done I've notched this out I'm not being too super picky with my one inch mark I just want to get it close um, so now we're gonna head over to the workbench and I will show you how we go about really knocking all the rest of this out all right so I'm gonna put this in the vise you're not gonna be able to see it from the side that mats on but the pencil line is over here we're gonna clamp this in and then you're gonna take a nice sharp chisel and what we're gonna do is fall downhill into that section there Nice thing is you can really just go to work. But please, for the love of God, make sure that you're always going downhill into the cutout section. If you tried to take this chisel and go up here, you were gonna tear this whole side to pieces. So just remember, downhill. If you've been building a turret for a while, that'll be instinctive, you'll know that. 
There's an advantage here to my laminate sides as well. You can see how I'm not having to really be too gentle with her. Being careful that I don't stab myself. <laughs> I'm gonna flip it, and then we'll go downhill to the other side. See if they can do this without taking out Matt's eye. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Going pretty quick, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing this quicker than you should if you've never done this before. <laughs> you really want to take your time if you've never done this before and step back and make sure that it looks nice. The funny thing is, like I said a few minutes ago, like, no matter how many times I do this, it just feels so weird. <laughs> like, this looks like you ruined. This is like when Bob Ross paints the tree on top of the mountain, and you're like, bro. And then you're like, oh, it's a tree. <laughs> 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 Keep it on. I'm not going to do the whole thing with this chisel. This is just the roughing in. We are about there, I think. Right? How are we looking, Matt? Yes. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the palm plane. You don't have to have one of these. These are going to be some sort of concave or convex. Convex, right, Matt? Uh, concave is uh, remember it's like shaped like a cave, like inward. So uh, if it's depending on which angle you look at, I guess it's both in it. <laughs> Yeah. Either way. <laughs> yeah. These are awesome. These little thumb planes. I have this small one that I use a lot. These are uh, Ibex. This is Ibex. This is this large one. And then this one I got from from LMI. I can't remember what it is. But the nice thing about these ones is that you, they allow you to come in here and scoop out. You can't really do that with a flat palm plane. So we'll come in here and use that now. <clears throat> Always downhill. So I think frankly the blade is con vex the the material for moving is concave that's exactly what i think i think this is a convex hand plane okay let's believe yeah i'm sure you'll let us know in the comment section <laughs> you always seem to so the thing about this area here where you start your binding or where you start your bevel you actually have to take off more material than you think because once again you have to remember that your binding is you know a quarter inch or six millimeters tall here so you're not actually going to see that part of the bevel starting until like way over here so you gotta excuse me you have to take off you actually have to take off more material than you think that you do in order for it to look right that's looking very nice i'm gonna switch this over to the other side and then i have one more trick up my sleeve to show you how i go about making this super smooth once again Noticing that because I have laminate sides, I can put this in a vise and really crank it down. And as soon as I pull it out of here, it's gonna spring right back to where it needs to be. You're seeing the advantages, I think, hopefully. <laughs> yes, that looks really nice. That looks very nice. So, I'm gonna get some sandpaper real quick and we are gonna smooth this out. If you don't do this at home, you should. Um, when you go to level the sides of your guitar, you can see over here, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. um, when I do that leveling, I use spring steel with sandpaper stuck to it. That's how I do that. I think that if you don't do that, you should be as well because it allows you to get these contours matched. But it also works really well over here for this step because what you can do is you can have your sandpaper um, on here. Let me grab a little bit more coarse. What's nice is once you glue some sandpaper to it, you can use hook and loop sandpaper and it just sticks right to it. But uh, what it allows you to do is to come in here and sand into this and basically create the radius of it with your spring steel, which is really nice. Um, so the trick here is to really, you want to get this to the point where if you were to not look at it, you don't feel any lumps or waves in it because that becomes your witness line right here at the bottom. If that line's not perfectly smooth, you're going to see it when you go to finish this arm bevel. Uh, especially, this one's actually a little bit easier to hide mistakes because it has that abalone trim on it. But if you're doing just a natural wooden veneer on it, you're gonna see any sort of little waviness to it. So take your time on this step and make sure that you get this thing nice and smooth. And you also want it to be 
perpendicular 90 degrees to the side. You, you don't want any sort of slop in it. You don't want to round it over. Also, we're going to hit 15,000 subscribers today. So before we get to the end of the video, because we're not there yet, I want to thank everybody that has subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, do that now. That would be awesome to keep pushing us along. It's super, it just blows my mind every time we look at our subscriber count. So it's not really because of Matt. We know that, but. <laughs> it's in spite of, actually. <laughs> So what my end block is actually it's, it's really proud it's sticking out a little high here so it's kind of getting in the way of what I want to do but we'll get around it very smooth so what like I, I always try to trust my hands more than I trust my eyes with a lot of the guitar building process and here if I cannot look at it and not feel any sort of waves I know that we're really good um, yeah yeah i want you to see how smooth it is from here all the way to here that's the look that i am shooting for for my arm bevels now mind you i do a large arm bevel but that's what really works well for my style of doing it and uh, i call that pretty much where we need to be you can after we glue in some other things have an opportunity to do some fine finessing on the end pieces um i think that another thing that i really want to point out is that you don't want to just drop off. You don't want it to curve down. I want it to kind of scoop this way, like very gradually, like a French curve. But remember, this whole process is very to taste. It's whatever you want, it's whatever your client wants. I have some clients who like, man, I only want a tiny arm bevel. Um, or some clients will want the angle of it to be more shallow this way, or they're gonna want it to be more shallow this way, which is what's cool about this whole thing. You can just change how far you go this way or how far you go this way to change that angle. My angle's roughly 45 degrees. It just works really well. So there's a lot of wiggle room here um, to, to do it how you want. So I think the only thing that I'm seeing is I might go a little bit more right here, just down a little bit, take off a little bit. I usually go straight to all the way to the end block on these. I'm just saying that and we will move on. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out of the vise. Next thing we need to do is grab some clamps and we are going to now temporarily clamp this thing on. I'm gonna clamp it on so that it sticks up a little proud. I want, I don't wanna, you wouldn't wanna clamp it on flush because remember we still need to radius this whole top and do all those things on the radius dish um, to make all this line up. So we wanna leave some extra meat on the bone here for sanding. So I'm gonna make sure I push this firmly against the end block. So we're gonna clamp that first one onto the end block here and then we are going to come over here and clamp it nice and tightly to the waist area. You see how much taller this one is? This one's sitting up really high. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Let's see, then I'm gonna take a pencil. We are gonna trace this. Trace this line here, All right? And we're gonna pull this off. And that's what we have is basically a reflection of what that looks like. The last thing that you need to do now is actually remember that we're gonna put kerfing inside this guitar. So I use this mahogany solid kerfing on my guitars. So what I do is I actually trace, add like a nice crashing sound to that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm way ahead of you. So what I'm gonna do is take that pencil line that I just marked and I'm going to roughly transfer, transfer the depth of my kerfing. <laughs> the Lord has spoken. <laughs> and we're gonna transfer that all the way around here. Just to give you a line. Because remember, that's, that's basically gonna be our, our glue up area. That's gonna be the area that you don't see that is surface area for the, the glue to stick to. 
Um, that's why we do this for those of you that maybe you're like, well, what's the point? And then we're gonna just transfer this around here. Transfer this over to here. Yeah, that looks good. So that's gonna be our cut line. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run over to my super dull bandsaw <laughs> and cut this off. And then we will go over to the edge sander and smooth it out. And then what we'll be left with is this um, backer piece ready to be glued onto the guitar. So we'll do that over here now. All right, so you wanna be really careful here that you don't let this thing catch and tear it out of your hand, but we are just going to cut it just to the outside of that pencil line. All right, so you can see how it looks like a beaver did that because my, dull, my blade is duller than a butter knife. Uh, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the edge sander and just smooth all of this out so that it looks really nice and uh, you'll get the idea. So now we're gonna take this to the edge sander and do this. Some of it's gonna be blind, uh, but you're just gonna check our work as we go. Cool, I think you get the idea there, right? Very nice, it doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be in the ballpark. Um, but it looks really nice and smooth. Um, so now we can head over to the rim and show you how I go about gluing this thing on. Okay, so the nice thing now is that we have that mark across the top here. So the way that we're gonna do this when we go to glue this on is once again, not in the mold, because we need to be able to access this whole lip here. And I'm gonna clamp this on so that that pencil line that we did earlier just lines up perfectly with this area. Pretty straightforward, right? I use these little, I think these are cobalt? I don't know, I got them at Home Depot or Lowe's. These work really, really good. You wanna use some sort of F clamp that has a lot of clamping pressure. Um, so let me get some glue. Nice little light touch on the glue here. The nice thing about the basswood is it, is it absorbs a lot of it. Um, I'm gonna put that on here. This is very similar to how you're gonna go about gluing your curving in on your guitar. Right, let me see what we got. Mm -hmm. Now, I usually start down here. I try not to let it touch over here because I don't wanna get glue everywhere until, the, until I get it kind of roughly aligned. I'm gonna get my first clamp on. Very lightly clamping here, just very lightly. Um, I have a couple of F clamps that I've actually put an inside radius on. It just really helps with this part here. And the reason I do that is just so it doesn't leave any marks. Take it very lightly. We have a little bit of a gap here. This is all things that are gonna be tightened up as we go. So I'm doing one here in the middle. Just pull it all together. Making sure everything's looking. So what happened here is there's a little gap here now. So now I just wanna make sure that we pull it all to where it needs to be before we get to cranking. All right, so now we're just gonna work our way around, making sure that this pencil line is, is roughly where we want it. All right, so I go about every inch and a half, two inches here, only because I'm, I'm running slightly lower on clamps. My CNC machine keeps eating clamps. <laughs> like, like that one, I don't know if you can see. <laughs> it's slowly cannibalizing all the clamps. Um, I'm not, Clamping these super, super hard still. I'm just, I wanna make sure that I get everything where I need it first before I really commit to it. All right, so now I'm gonna give, start giving it a little bit more pressure here. Working my way around. Put one here on the end. Really get it going. I'm out of those. So on the end here, I'm just gonna put like a traditional clamp on it. Looks really good. What you want to do is flip it upside down, make sure that you don't have any gaps here. You want to make sure you got that seated nice and tightly inside of here. There's inevitably going to be a slight little hairline gaps here, there. Not those aren't nearly as big of a deal. So that's basically how we've done that. That's 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 the very first step in doing an arm bevel on a guitar. You can also do rib bevels, which is ones that I put over here on the, on the other side of the guitar. The exact same thing applies. It's no different, it's just a different shape. Um, what we'll do is let this dry overnight or we can let it go for, you know, for an hour if you were wanting to move along. Um, the cool thing is that you can see is now when we go to do our kerfing is that we just basically got to take the kerfing and do this section. We'll do that whole other side and then do the whole bottom of the guitar, but it'll all line up really nicely. And we have from that angle, you can see where our arm bevel is going to be. It looks really nice. Um, 
Before we close up the guitar, what we're gonna do next, uh, as far as the arm bevel is concerned in the next episode, is we're gonna round over the whole bottom side of that, um, the arm bevel backing piece, just to make it even more lightweight. But uh, that's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, I think that'll give you a good explainer on how to at least get started on the arm bevel on your guitar. Um, yeah, if you guys have any other techniques, because I know there's many different ways to skin this cat, just like everything in Luthery, um, let us know in the comment section. We appreciate you guys for watching the 3000 year old guitar build series. And if you guys just came here to see the arm bevel part of this series, we appreciate it. But check out the whole build series here because we got a cool thing going on. And uh, there'll be a separate playlist specifically for the arm bevel as well as the 3000 year old. Thank you again to everybody who has bought t-shirts. Those are super awesome. Um, I don't have one on today. They're all dirty. I gotta wash some more. <laughs> yeah, man. And once again, uh, 15,000 subscribers. We, we went from two to 15,000 in like 100 days. And thank you to everybody who's been a part of that. It's super awesome. You guys have just been such a great community of people. And uh, we thank you. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you do that now. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next episode, folks. Thanks.